Honda. Major recall, man. Major, major recall. 1.7 wow. million vehicles are being recalled in the United States for a steering wheel jam. The Acura Integra, Civic, and CRV are the most affected models. Over 10,000 warranty claims about this since 2021, and now 1.7 million vehicles being recalled. You can see it right here, Dad. Improperly produced steering gearbox warm wheel that swells while driving, increasing friction and steering difficulty, and heightening the likelihood of a crash. Another 240,000 vehicles are being in, uh, recalled in Canada and nearly 60,000 in Mexico. Two million vehicles. The vehicles impacted had the 2023 to 2025 Acura Integra, the Civic Type R, CRV, Hybrid, CRV, HRV, the 2020, all through 2022 to 2025, the Civic, Civic Hatchback, the Integra Type S. Like, this is this is a big recall, Dad. This is actually going to require customers to go into the dealership oh, to yeah. get this replaced and fixed. This is a big recall from Honda. That is that's a huge recall. One point, well, almost two million vehicles uh, in North America. Um, I I hate to say this, I don't want to rain on Honda or Acura's parade, but that would be enough to make me consider something other than a Honda or an Acura. Right. Um, and Think about the time involved, uh, you know, uh, to schedule, I don't know, 1.7 million vehicles to run through service departments throughout the country. That's going to be difficult to have the parts that are needed uh, to take care of the recall. That's going to be difficult. It, it's just it, it, the, the amount of time involved between the customer having to get their vehicle there. Uh, and then the time it takes for the for the mechanics to actually do the repair, um, and then the customer having to get back to the it is just it, it does not bode well. And I, I, and I'm serious when I say I see a headline like that, and I instantly think to myself, well, that's pretty much every one of their relatively inexpensive, extremely popular vehicles. Um, I'm no longer interested. Thanks very much. I'll have to go look at another brand. So I think I think that could have a really, really negative impact um, on on Honda moving forward. And it's kind of surprising this comes on the heels of remember Toyota and Lexus yes. physically, manually have to replace over a hundred thousand engines between the Lexus LX and the Toyota Tundra. These are, ex I mean, that's significantly fewer vehicles. It's one seventeenth or one twentieth the total number of vehicles impacted. Um, but still, like, yeah. But these are, but the cost, the cost will be greater to replace a hundred thousand engines than it will to replace the worm wheel yeah. in inside the uh, the steering wheel complex. So, um, yeah. No, totally. That's spot on. That, however, these are really big, impactful. I mean, these are brands that people think about when they, you know, when, when uh, you think reliability and affordability yes. and they are having these major mechanical issues, it kind of brings the question, these are recent vehicles, right? The LX, the Tundra, obviously the model yeah. I just listed out for Honda and Acura. We've talked about vehicles that have been produced during the pandemic. You know, we're kind of on the other side of that now, but there is in general, I don't want to say a lack of quality, but I think there's a, there's a lot of recalls going on right now. Some, some companies <laughs> trying to compete with Ford for the number one spot on the NHTSA recall list. I think you can say in general yeah. that overall um, quality issues for most brands have reared their ugly head much more frequently recently than perhaps in the past. Now, and I don't know that's if that's because um, they, they're not doing thorough um, um, testing prior to releasing these things. I don't know if some of it's an engineering issue. Uh, if it's just a rush to find cheaper parts in order to hold uh, the total cost of manufacturing down, I am not sure. But whatever it is, every one of these damn manufacturers really does need to look into it because it is creating um, bad publicity for all of these brands. Oh, it absolutely is, Dad. I want to remind everyone back on CarEdge.com. Click on the research tab, choose a vehicle you're interested in. Let's go to that Honda. Where is it? Honda. Know, we'll do the Civic. When you search for a vehicle through the Car Edge Research Hub, you're going to land on a page that gives you all the information you need to know about what it's going to cost to own that vehicle. You can click on cost to own. You can see pricing information. 
for all the various trim levels. Other deals that Car Edge community members and our concierge team have gotten for that particular vehicle, lease special, specs, warranty. And then the reason I came here, Des, because on cost of ownership, you can go to things like maintenance and you can see what the expected likelihood of a major repair is during your time of owning that vehicle. And Honda, Toyota, et cetera, those brands have typically done really, really well. But we update this data pretty frequently. And so I'll be curious to see if the cost of ownership continues to go up as these vehicles become obviously more technologically complex. We talked about that yesterday with the fact that Mercedes-Benz is trying to build a video game hub in your car. And obviously that's going to make owning the car more expensive as components fail. But also as maybe we realize more and more, I don't know, like MBA people running these companies saying, okay, we have to get costs down, costs down, costs down. No wonder we see the recalls. No wonder we see maybe the quality of the products uh, worsening and then ultimately cost of ownership going up. So right. quick plug for what we have, but also maybe maybe the numbers are going to get worse. Customer sues Illinois' Napleton store, alleges unauthorized credit check. Arlington Heights CDJR, Chrysler Dodge Sheep and Ram Shoppers lawsuit seeks class action status for other consumers who allegedly also saw unwanted hard credit pulls by the Napleton Group. A customer has sued Napleton Automotive Group, alleging one of its Illinois Stellantis dealerships ran a formal credit check on him without consent. Brian Olson, whose lawsuit said he was explicit with Napleton's Arlington Heights CDJR about wanting to pay cash, sought uh, class action status for the past five years for U.S. consumers who experienced a similar unauthorized hard credit check by uh, by the group Napleton Automotive of Oak Brook Terrace, ranks number 24 on the 150 largest dealership groups. Olson also accused the group's store and parent company of violating the Fair Credit Reporting Act, which limits the release of credit reports. He also accused them of invading his privacy or seclusion. So Dad Napleton is obviously denying this and they're going through all the rigmarole, but we have a consumer here trying to get class action status for the past five years for a hard credit check when paying cash to purchase a vehicle. Are you surprised by this? Everything's in our opinion, by the way, for this segment. Uh, in my opinion, isn't, and this has nothing to do with my opinion at the moment, but isn't Napleton the same group that I believe two years ago was fined $10 million yeah. for for uh, violations, consumer fraud violations, other consumer violations, um, uh, charging uh, unusual fees? Uh, just they, of course, they stroked the check. They did not admit any guilt. Um, but it's the same organization. And, and in my opinion, if, if you were in a situation like that at your stores in the past, then, well, more than likely, in my opinion, the same kind of crap is going on at the rest of your stores and the rest of your locations. Okay. And, and the only reason it would be is because in my opinion, at the uppermost echelons of the organization, you don't condemn those actions. You more or less condone those actions, and you need to do something about it. Now, do people paying cash at a dealership need to have a credit check? They need to have a um, um, OFAC exactly. check. They need to make sure the government requires that that you not be on the um, um, uh, a certain watch list, the terrorist watch list, okay? But that doesn't require a complete credit application or a com- credit report. It's a separate report altogether. If you want to write a check and take the vehicle home with you that day, many dealerships would require a credit application and to run your credit application to make sure, I don't know, You're who you purport to be, and you would actually have the ability to stroke that check. Okay. Now, if if you said you were paying cash and you were going to bring back either a certified check or a cashier's check or a a treasurer's check, uh, there's really no need for them to run a hard credit check. Does it happen every day of the week? Yeah. Absolutely. So we'll keep our eyes on this story and see what comes of it. But yeah, Napleton was the group. They paid about $9.6 million back to 66,000 prior customers for junk fees. So, you know, we haven't heard a lot of stories quite like that. So definitely, definitely a little bit of a history there. Yeah. 
How Mercedes and other automakers aim to make cars mobile entertainment hubs, BMW and Volkswagen are working with Air Console to provide video game apps for in-car entertainment. I'm going to give you the floor, Dad. Don't give me the floor. It's it's uh, you can give me the finger, but don't give me the floor. Um, it, it, this is like this is this is like the stupidest stuff in the history of humanity. I mean, do 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 we really? Does anybody really need to have the ability to be able to play games, video games, on the? dashboard of their car now i realize i realize that well the driver won't be able to play because well that would just be well i don't know too distracting but the fact that the driver might be able to see the game that the person in the passenger seat is playing oh that couldn't be distracting at all okay um there is there is no human need to be able to play video games in an automobile based on the dashboard. Uh, You know, just driving a car is entertainment enough. Just watching other people drive. Just watching people drive and text is entertainment enough. Do you really need to watch them drive, text, and, I don't know, play on their console at the same time? We're driving cars here, okay? Highly uh, heavy moving. Highly, <laughs> highly heavy. <laughs> yeah, they're heavy. They're heavy and they're moving and it's equipment and they and you have accidents and people get hurt and killed. You don't need distractions like this. Concentrate on driving the damn car. It, it's, there are better ways to spend money for these manufacturers. Don't turn a car into an entertainment hub. It's a car, damn it. Do you think, Dad, what is your professional opinion on the impact these types of investments in cars will have on insurance and cost of ownership? What do you think? Well, I, I, I don't I, it's, it, It's got to impact cost of ownership because this stuff ain't free, okay? So they're going to raise the prices of the cars because they've included this nonsense in them. Insurance companies are going to go, well, this is going to distract drivers just a tad bit more. So your insurance rates, which have jumped 20 to 25 percent in the last couple of years, are going to go up even more. Um, Human beings shouldn't need this much entertainment. Okay, I'm just saying. You know, find something else. I mean, if you, this is going to sound terrible. Read a book, (laughs) okay? Not the driver, but the passenger. Let the passenger read a book. Let them, they don't need to be playing games, video games on your dashboard. It's just, we have, as a society, we have, and I'm not just talking here in the United States because that was Mercedes and BMW. And so apparently it's, it's big in Germany. Uh, we as society have lost our way completely when we think we, oh, I can't have a car without that. that yeah, you can. You just use the damn car for transportation from point A to point B and concentrate on driving the damn thing. 